Yo, what is going on guys? Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this natural lighting in Cinema 4D, also known as dappled lighting. Um, I did a few of these renders uh, over the course of like last week. Um, basically, it's where you just have this really natural lighting as if like a tree or something was next to it. Um, and I did actually do like a really quick tutorial tutorial on Instagram. Uh, I've been trying to do more of these recently, just trying to, you know, get the content out in different platforms in the best way I can. Uh, people seem to be really enjoying them. So if you don't follow me on Instagram and you would prefer to have more of like a written form of content as opposed to a video, then go check out my Instagram. And I've also just released that same scene on my Gumroad and it's completely free. So go download it, go check it out, um, pick it apart. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two from it. Um, and yeah, let me know if there's anything else you would want me to drop on the gum road. I'm thinking of dropping uh, more of these scenes on here, more of these like animations that I've been building, um, just kind of little experiments. But again, maybe someone will find them helpful or find them useful. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave the dis leave the links in the description for all of that. But let's jump straight into the video. Let me hide OBS. And this is the scene that we're working with today. So um, I've just built a fairly basic vase, a cube, a sphere, and then I've got a floor and a wall. Uh, all pretty straightforward materials. Um, so yeah, let's get that dappled lighting. Oh, pardon me. Um, so let's go to window content browser and I've already searched it but basically I just searched plants I'll retype it again for your benefit uh, go into the folder and I'm gonna use the folders on the side so I can navigate through these a bit easier but basically the content browser if you didn't already know um, is something that's built into cinema it's basically a load of models textures different kind of assets um, that you can use. They've got loads on there for like packaging, glassware, um, they've got like nuts, bolts, screws, literally pretty much most basic models that you would probably use at some point or another. Um, so it's really handy if you're just trying to get like a quick win, I suppose. Um, but today we're going to be using one of these plants, uh, more specifically this hackberry tree here. Um, I'm only saying that one because that's the one I used for the original post. Um, probably the reason why I chose this tree is because it's quite sparse in terms of the amount of leaves it has. So it has like a fairly good, um, it has fairly good spacing between all the leaves which will let the light shine through it and get those shadows that we're after. Um, of course you could use any of these. Actually, do you know what? Let's switch it up. Why not? Let's go for the maple tree. So I'm going to double click that bring it in and it's going to be life size so obviously this is 400 centimeters um, by the looks of it and it's just way too big for our scene so we're going to scale this down by pressing T for the scale tool or selecting it in the top here I'm going to press E to get the move tools and I'm going to move this over probably scale it down a bit more actually maybe something like that so we can see that it's come into our viewport and we haven't got the shadows we've just got an annoying tree trunk in the way so let's sort the lighting out first and then we'll talk about how we can remove that tree from our scene so what I'm actually going to do is get an area light now I've created this shortcut here but you can come up to redshift lights and area light and I am using redshift however this technique will work with pretty much ender any render engine uh, and I'll show you how you can go about um, just doing it in any render engine pretty much but just grab your area light and I'm going to move this to the side and what I'm going to do is actually use a technique which I use for most of my lighting um, and I right click, I go to animation tags and I grab a target tag uh, basically what this allows us to do is it kind of does what it says on the tin it's going to target this light towards a target object so I'm going to drag the vase into the target object and you can see that it's spun that light around and wherever we move this it's going to face towards that vase. So this is a really good technique for speeding up your workflow. Um, it just takes out the 
need for you to like move and then rotate it, move the rotate it, and so on and so on. So it helps to eliminate that step, which in the long run just helps to speed up everything. So we've got our area light at the moment and it's way too big. Basically what we want to do is get this nice and close with the tree. It's gonna become a tree hugger. Um, and we're gonna scale this down. Basically we just want the light to be shining through the tree and you can already see we're getting some of the shadows up here in our preview. Um, and yeah, we're just going to adjust this pretty much now. So it's a game of adjusting the light and adjusting the angle and position of the tree. Um, maybe I can bring this out a little bit to the right so that the shadows are projecting more towards the wall. Uh, maybe shrink it down a little bit, bring it a bit closer. Um, Let's see if we increase the exposure, see how that looks. We might actually want to bring this tree down like this and bring it out a little bit. Okay, cool. So I'm actually going to hide this tree now because it's getting in the way and I can't really see the shadows going on behind it. Uh, we're getting some nice floor shadowing here and we can see we're getting some on the, some on the back as well. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to show you the way I would do this in Redshift and then I'll show you the way I'd do it if I was just using like a standard renderer. Uh, so I'm going to right click on our tree object, grab a Redshift object and this um, Redshift object gives you a bunch of settings which I'm not really going to talk about today but the main one we want here is the visibility tab so I'm going to override this and then untick primary ray visible so this is just going to hide it from our camera pretty much um, and now you can see that it is magically disappeared so let's move this tree back just so that it's blocking that light again and we're getting a pretty nice result there the only problem is that the tree is now intersecting with that plane and we're getting like a weird artifact there so it is kind of a game of just playing with this a little bit um, to get the result you want maybe we could lean that forward a little bit bring it back um, and maybe like we actually want to take the target off the light so I can take that off and then rotate it just so it's more towards the tree and now we're getting somewhere close to what we're after so let's bring that down a little bit yeah so that's looking pretty good so I could you could tinker with this all day until you get the result you're after I think that looks pretty good we're getting a little bit of a hot spot here so maybe we need to just reduce this a tiny bit maybe put this down to like one um, just so that's not as blown out that looks a bit better and what I'm just going to do quickly now is show you how I would hide this if I'm not using a redshift tag so I'm going to delete that and I'm hoping this is going to work um, because I am using redshift but I imagine it will uh, you're going to want to right click come to render tags and compositing and just untick scene by camera let's see if this works yep there you go, it does the exact same trick. So if you're using physical, for example, which is built into Cinema 4D, uh, you can use a compositing tag and it pretty much gives you all the same settings as the Redshift ones, or at least like the basic ones you need. Um, so for example, we've got scene by reflection, scene by refraction, cast shadows. So if we unticked cast shadows, I think we won't get the tree shadows. Yeah, so now that's completely blown out. That's acting as if it's not there at all. So you can use the compositing tag um, yeah and that's pretty much it so that is how I set up this scene now there are a few other ways you could do this um, you could do this by putting a texture into a plane so getting the texture of a tree putting it on a plane and shining a light through that plane um, that's how I used to do it however using geometry does give you the advantage of animating the tree if you wanted animated shadows uh, maybe that's something I can touch on in another video if you guys wanted to see that. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much my workflow. This has been a fairly simple tutorial today, but hopefully it will help you guys out. Um, 
when I was trying to figure out how to do this myself a while ago, um, I couldn't really find any videos for it, so I thought I would make one myself. So yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, um, go give this project a download. It's completely yours to use. Use the materials, use the lighting, um, and just, yeah, rip it apart. Hopefully you guys will learn something from it, potentially. Um, or maybe someone can tell me a better way to do this. Maybe I'm doing this completely wrong, but this is the way that works for me. So that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. Um, and yeah, if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy the content and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. I think that's everything I have to say for today. Go follow me on Instagram if you want to see more animations. Um, I'll try actually get some tutorials out on here about how I maybe went about doing some of these more recent posts. Um, this soft body one was quite cool and it's fairly straightforward so yeah maybe I'll do a tutorial on that but let me know in the comment section down below and I'm gonna stop waffling now. Yeah cool alright thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.